Um, can you please confirm if you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, great. So hello everyone, uh, welcome to uh, the session uh, for related to the project browser. So the title is Unlocking the Potential, Exploring the Project Browser Initiative for Enhanced Efficiency and Collaboration with Drupal. So, um, yeah. So what is the problem definition here, right? So now, uh, as we know that uh, in other, other than Drupal uh, CMS, uh, if we talk about, let's say WordPress, whenever uh, we try to install the WordPress site, so there is, what we can do is we can simply install it and with a single click we can get new plugins as like for whatever uh, functionality we want but in drupal what happens that whenever we install the core so there is a core uh you know uh, uh core modules which is a set of core uh, modules which we install in a go but after that if we want to install let's say any country module for example tokens c tools or anything so for that, we find a bit difficult uh, difficulty there. Like what happens that we will, we should know that where uh, we should, first of all, search for it, like whether Drupal has that kind of uh, sort of functionality or not. Then we need to know that how exactly we can find it. And then we need to know that how to install it. For those sort of things, we should know uh, those commands. So like those sort of, you know, uh, structure, like how we can get that particular plugin. And this is this is where it becomes a bit relatively difficult to use, especially for the new uh, users who are coming to Drupal. So now what is hap what is happening because of that is that a uh, user find a bit difficult these things and they are actually lo uh, losing interest in Drupal because of these sort of things. Like they are thinking that uh, it is a bit difficult or challenging to find new plugins and then install them on those sort of things because it involves a, a lot of numerous steps, which I just talked about. And after that, sometimes we need technical skills as well, uh, like, you know, composer, uh, because we know that composer is what uh, right now is managing the uh, dependencies between the plugins. So we should know the composer's uh, state commands, like how exactly we install it, then how exactly uh, we enable those sort of modules. So this becomes a, a bit difficult because not everybody know how to use the composer. So this is a bit uh, like, this is the problem definition here. Okay. And what is our goal? Goal is to simplify that uh, we want to give users such an experience that the process of finding and installing the module becomes easier. And this is for those users who are actually uh, like, you know, individuals and new to Drupal, like the site builders, they don't know actually the coding in the backend. And uh, what it actually we want along with this is that the developers, let's say I'm a developer, but I don't know exactly how to run the command for composer and those sort of things. So I should have some sort of, you know, a handbook or something like that, where I know each command and everything that this is what I run. And uh, then I will get the module without leaving the site. I will be on the site all the time and I will be doing the development as well along with, uh, you know, searching for the modules. So the overall objective here is to enhance the accessibility and use usability for various user groups, like the developers and the site builders and the individual uh, new members to Drupal. Uh, yeah, so Currently, uh, so this was the initiative and uh, from few years, a set of people and um, basically they are working towards developing these th this thing and we call it a project browser. So right now it's a contributed module and uh, we need to install it uh, in the system for now, but it will become a part uh, of uh, Drupal in future. So what will happen that as soon as we install the Drupal code, it will automatically be there in the Drupal code base, but right now we have to install it. So what happens after that? The module is installed and we will get uh, a new tab called uh, browse just next to, uh, in the extend section. So there is an extend section we see in the admin toolbar from where we install the module. So we click on it and we will see the browse tab as well. I will show everything to you like uh, on the site as well for, for now. I'm just explaining. And there we will get a UI to explore in the Drupal.org module world. 
So we will get each and every module which is there in the Drupal.org in the real time because uh, so there is a API which is getting called in the backend which will get all the modules in the real time and then we can actually see the commands how to install it or if you want to install it also we can install it so this is how it works now along with this there is a very important and uh, you know powerful feature which in future which will come is that this uh, project browser will give us extra you know kind of uh, feature in terms of let's say in my uh, site i don't want to install each and every module and i don't want to give the functionality uh, for that site builders to basically just go to this tab and you know install whatever module you want so for that also i can write my custom plugins in future it will come right now it's not there so we can craft our custom plugins and that what it will give us that we can simply you know kind of remove some sort of modules that these sort of modules i don't never want uh, to be installed on my site and those sort of things so i can you know personalize as well as per my site so that feature will come in in future because drupal.org is a wide uh, you know uh, site and there can be any um, any module which can be listed in my site and there is a security uh, risk as well there so because a lot of different sort of uh, modules will be there somebody can install any module and it, it can and it can create problem sometimes so this is a feature which will come in the future any questions till now okay yeah so uh, i'll explain this slide as well right now so uh, we talk about automatic updates module so there is an automatic update module uh, available in drupal and i may already give presentation around this so um, there is a relationship between automatic updates and project browser module here what is the relationship is that there is a sub module which comes along with automatic updates the module name is package manager so whenever uh, we install project browser we need we should in, we need to install automatic updates as well because package manager is a part of automatic updates and project browser also needs this module so there is a dependency in this regard so so let's say if we directly install a package a project browser but do not install automatic updates then we will not get the functionality to install the module on the site we will only be able to see the uh, you know commands and everything like this is the command to install the module manually but we will not be able to uh, you know kind of integrate the module installation with the drupal so once we install automatic update you do not need to enable it you can only enable package manager and it will uh, give the option to in, uh, install the module via project browser so there is a relationship so what will happen in future is that automatic updates and project browser both will be the part of drupal core and package manager is a common module which is being which is basically being used by both the modules so that so this is how the structure will be in future but right now it is a bit segregated and this is uh, to basically know that this is how it works so i'm telling you right now these things and um, in the absence of package manager as i already mentioned that user uh, will be only able to see the uh, instructions uh, that this is how the module can be installed via composer but they cannot perform the actual updates there yeah so it's time for demo now so actually i'm using Gitpod because of if i'm not active for some time it gets timed out but uh, let me show it to you meanwhile it gets filled up so this is the project browser page on drupal.org now here we can see uh, you know there are different screenshot attached and then we can see the problem statement as well uh, if for someone who wants to you know kind of uh, understand it in deep they can simply go and try it out try it here uh, this will spin up environment similarly what i am going to do but i'm just telling for you know uh, like uh, checking out later then there is a uh, initiative page which i will show you and everything is explained here like how it works and everything there is a uh, requirement that it will only work with drupal 10 plus and uh, yeah along with this let me tell you one more thing so there are some modules which are dependent on the libraries 
So uh, as soon as we install those, I mean, any sort of that module, it will automatically take care of the library as well. So you don't need to, uh, you know, explicitly uh, download the library or install it. It will automatically take off, take care of every single thing. So this is the power of this module. Okay. Let's check. Great. Install it as well. No problem. Give it some time. Great. So now we have our site up and running. We can see here in the code base that it has few modules under control, which is project browser. Okay, this is installed for us. Now there is other module which is automatic updates. As I mentioned that this module would need it to install the site. And along with this, there is a package manager. So this is how the structure look like. So package manager right now is a part of automatic updates. Now we install it just to uh, get this module. Okay, And in my site, right now the package manager is installed, but automatic updates is not installed. So this is how right now the current scenario is. Let's go to the site. Okay. So now in the, uh, if I go to extend, if I look for the project browser, this is the project browser module. There is a configuration page. So uh, I'll show, let's go to the configuration page. Now, uh, there is a thing to be noted that if I do, let's say if I do not install automatic updates because there is no dependency between these two modules. So what will happen? Now, this particular uh, checkbox will be unchecked and grayed out in that case, which means that it will not allow installing the module via UI. So it will be unchecked and grayed out, which means that it will only show the uh, commands that this these are the commands to install the module. Now, right after we install the automatic updates and package manager, uh, then I get the this option, you know, enabled, and then I can check and uncheck this option. So this is the difference. Uh, it will not break. It will just show the commands. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that it has a Drupal.org mocked API, which is right now enabled. And this is what is responsible for getting all the real-time modules data from Drupal.org. Okay. This is the configuration page. The other setting which is there is to disable add new module uh, page. So we see that this add new module tab is there, right? So as soon as we disable it, it will go away. So what happens that let's say uh, we don't want user to install new module from this page. We only want install our user to install all the modules from browse page. So we would definitely want this to go away, right? So in that case, uh, we can disable this setting and it will be, uh, is, it will disappear. So the user will be only able to uh, download the module from the browse tab. So as the slide said, uh, we now have a browse tab here. So let's go to this one. So this is how it looks, <clears throat> okay. By default, the maintained and covered by a security policy, uh, these filters will be selected. We can see right now it is showing me 4,180 results. It means these number of modules. We have different filters here. So these are the category of modules. So let's say if I want to only search for the e-commerce, I select it, it gets enabled here. And we can see only the e-commerce module here. Right now. Okay. So as I mentioned, so these are the modules. There is, you know, pagination and those sort of things. Then as I mentioned that if this is disabled, it will only show us the command, right? So let's go to this page again. We see view command right now here. We click on it. Now it says multiple things. How to download. The recommended way of doing this is Composer. We can use this. We can copy from here. How to install. Use these commands and it will be installed automatically. So this is how it's tells us now i don't i don't have to leave this my site to go to drupal.org or anywhere i just i can simply use these commands and install my site right similarly let's say if i enable this so this view command gets changed to add and install now I can install my modules, but right now, if I click on it, there is some error, which is coming up 
it is because right now it is uh, running on the git pod so there are some you know limitations but uh, if we run it on the uh, different environment it will basically what it will do it will whenever i click there is a command which will run uh, using composer in the backend similar commands which is which was shown there right so first of all the composer then the drush commands and it will download and enable the module along with that whatever the dependent modules also it will install those as well along with the libraries so this is how it looks and in the last as i mentioned the package manager module needs to be installed along if i show you automated so this module is not enabled right now but the package manager needs to be installed if i disable the package manager uh, this option will be grayed out so this is in general about package manager and uh, the module so that's all any questions yeah, I got a question. Uh, thanks for that, Gaurav. That was really cool. Um, is there any plan to also support adding patches for particular modules? Um, I think right now I did I did not see anything related to patches here, mm. but uh, yeah, I but I I need to check it like just for the plan. stable release actually. Yeah. Yes. So patches yeah. will need to be manually added. Like need to do it separately. Okay, cool. And it is actually right now it's in you know uh, testing phase, so there might be some issues. But uh, we like multiple sites are using this also. Like three hundred plus sites are using it. So, but just to are... add, just to add to it, like it uses Composer uh, by default. So if you are install, if you click on Add Install. The module will be installed via composer so you can extend the composer and like do whatever you changes you want to do and secondly it also lets you create a plugin for uh i think i got mentioned it but i just wanted to stress that um it also lets you create a new plugin for uh the the project browser so you can restrict uh access you can uh, like do a lot of changes there so yeah you can only allow some categories to be filtered so that also restrictions you can put uh Gaurav, tyler has put a question in the chat are the modules listed in project browser up to date Yes, so uh, the modules which we are getting are up to date and to their latest stable release. Like I mentioned here, let me go back. So there are only two filters by which the modules are getting, uh, you know, maintained, currently actively maintained and covered by a security policy. So it means the latest stable release will be there. Thanks, I have a question. Um... So this module allows you to install other modules, but if there's like a security release that comes out, would it allow you to upgrade it to the new version? So, uh, so basically, we, this is what uh, where the automatic updates uh, module will come into picture. So, uh, those two modules, uh, you know, they. So, I think that will happen via automatic updates. Uh, we can uh, in, up, install the latest update via that module. So, I mean, this is a set of, uh, you know, features which will come, which will be basically, you know, uh, covering via automatic updates and uh, this project browser. So both the things will be working together. Any other questions? I think Simon also had a question in chat. There's a question from Simon chat. Do you use this if you are a developer? Does it make it faster? Most of the time spent choosing modules is looking through code, but I don't see quick access to review the code of a module. Would you use this if you are a developer? That's the main question. Uh, see, uh, so basically, let's say if I am a developer, in my from my perspective, sometimes we are not aware that uh, like what all modules are available for, let's say just for um 
for anything let's say accessibility so i don't know like what all modules are there so at least i'll be able to you know list out all the modules okay these are the modules i can uh, look into and then after that uh, i can simply go from here to the modules you know detail page and i can see like this is the code and everything so at so definitely i will use it because uh, it will give me more flexibility in terms of uh, get you know getting about modules in general all the modules and then it definitely gives me all the steps you know from here only i can install it from here i can see the commands so definitely uh, it's it has a good impact for sure oh, thanks Laura. i think i have a question uh, i have an, uh, another answer to this side i think this this initiative and this module is mainly to to help with the one of the biggest issues that everybody says with Drupal is the cost of entry, the barrier, the entry barrier. So I think this module will help with that. So people who are new to Drupal or people who are not developers, developers, but are afraid, they should, they would be able to you know, use this module and this will help them in, um, in installing new modules, etc. Um, but I do do understand what you're trying to say, because as, as, if I look at the people here, Gaurav, who's been working with Drupal for 10 years, I don't think he would use, if he knows which module to install, he will not use the uh, project browser. He will just go ahead and do a composer require. Yeah. But again, using- uh, Actually, one yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm just reading out his comments in the chat. Today, I looked at three theme, themes, which are modules, and I had to look at the code, and none of them were appropriate. Mm, totally valid. Uh, but then you don't want the code in prod, so you have to remove it before deploying it. Yeah. Helps them to more quickly install crap that makes their site bloated. Yeah. Actually, there's a uh, another group of uh, people who are still using the WordPress because of these things only. So I, I'm still I can say it would be very useful for the for those kind of uh, group of person who are managing site themselves without uh, looking into the server itself. They just want site hosted somewhere and they can easily manage using the plugins, modules, et cetera. Totally, so totally. I, I think this is the counterpart of a WordPress uh, plugin installer. And totally agree with it. This is not, not a tool for seasoned developers. That's pretty clear. Yeah, yeah. It's more a tool for newbies or people who are trying to try their hand on Drupal. Yeah, it, it, it is more about uh, Drupal as a CMS, not as a framework or that we are used to saying that Drupal is not just a CMS. But yeah, if you talk about CMS, it is very useful and it should be available to those person who are using Drupal as a CMS only. So they, they need a module or any uh, customization in their site, they can easily search plugins here and do that. It, it's really hard for, uh, a not technical person to look into Drupal dot org and figure out something and install the module manually. Uh, I have a question. Like, um, is is there a way to restrict the modules that you see? So, if I just yeah. wanted to allow people to install, you know, strict set yes. of modules, do that. Yeah. So there will be Shivan. Uh, so like, uh, so there there will be a plugin system which will be you know there. Uh, we can create our custom plugins to uh, you know uh, restrict users to see set of modules and even try. We can do different sort of things like maybe I think introduce different sort of filters or those sort of things as well. But right now the uh, the roadmap is not uh, you know so it's it's there but it's not clear right now what all is going to happen. But no. there will be definitely custom things which we can do with this in future. I, I can see the practical use if, if that was available, like in Gov CMS, like you just allow certain set of modules that they can install. Yeah. Yeah, agree. All right. Uh, so yeah, the best use case is a distribution that whitelist modules that can be installed. Yeah, and that's exactly what you want to see. Any more questions? All right, I'll stop recording then. Thanks a lot, Shivan, for this.